Well, good evening. I'm glad to greet you here from Germantown Christian Center on this Wednesday night. Uh, you obviously don't know this, but it's raining outside here where we are. And uh, it's nice being inside, a warm sanctuary. Uh, don't have a whole lot of people here. And I know many of you, if you live in Shelby County, of course, know that they've uh, restricted us in a lot of ways and uh, trying to keep a lid on uh, the spread of uh, this COVID and what have you. But just don't let anything else dampen your enthusiasm for Jesus. And tonight we're going to spend a few moments and encourage you. Just have a short little devotional and hopefully give you something that you can go ahead and use throughout this week. Because undoubtedly, every one of us here are believing for some things and believing for some folks. And uh, you're standing in faith and expecting God to come through for you. And one thing about God is he's faithful. You know it and I know it. We've seen it, you see it. And so we're going to encourage one another and uh, hopefully give you something, as I said, that will allow your life to be more glorifying to God, uh, bring a, a, a peace to you, a joy, as it were, that, that just resounds throughout just every part of you. And uh, others will notice it. And then I'll ask you, why do you have that joy? And you can just say, well, let me tell you why. And you can share, your, of course, your faith in Christ. So anyway, let's, before we begin, let's go ahead and let's open up in prayer. Father, we love you. Oh, yes, we do. We thank you for the goodness and the mercy you have shown to us, that you have revealed us. And we thank you, Father, for as we have said and will continue to say, this is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. We thank you for all the many benefits that you've given. We also thank you, Father, for the people in which you've led into our lives, our families, our friends, those that you put before us to pray for and to to help encourage. We ask you, Father, to continue to show yourself faithful and strong on our behalf. Allow our lives to be transformed and allow our lives to help transform the lives of others. Jesus, we are in love with you. We thank you for taking care of us. You know everything that's about our lives and you're interested in them. And we thank you for the, the promise that you've made that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. Thank you for this night, a night to glorify your name and to live our life and our faith out loud. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, if you'd like to open up with me in whatever device you're using, I'm, I'm using my iPad. Um, here in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Ephesians 3, 19. Um, I was meditating uh, earlier today and I just, you know, I... I'm sure you've done it too, but you, you ever cried out for more of God? I mean, just cried out, Father, I want to know you more. I want to know you better. I want to understand things that, that Father, you can now share with me because, well, I, I'm, I'm maturing. I'm growing up, as it were, in you. You know, all of us have that heart's desire to go, as it were, from glory to glory, day by day, every day that we live. That the things that he can share with us today, that, that he's able to, that perhaps he wasn't able to do so maybe a week or a month or a year ago because we're growing spiritually. Every single day we're getting more inclined to hear the voice of God. We're getting better to be able to follow what does the word say. We're able to go ahead and, and, and refuse to listen to that leading of our, spirit, of, our, of our flesh rather and rather listen to our spirit. You know, that, that, that fleshly part of you that tells you to sometimes do something or maybe say something you shouldn't say or... You know, you know, you, you, you just give in to a temptation or something that you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, isn't it nice to know that your spirit can, can rise up and speak to you? The word of God that you know rises up in you and, and just confirms to you of what you should be doing. So you don't have to, you know, later down the line say, oh, Father, forgive me. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to live your life and to do so for his glory and honor. And to do it knowing that you're walking in step with his will for our lives. That's what God wants for us. And uh, we, want, we want it for ourselves in, in, a, in a higher way, in a better way every day. And so here in Ephesians chapter 319, there's this scripture that I'd like to read to you. And it says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth all knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And that's a prayer. I mean, this is a prayer 
This is a prayer that we are encouraged to, to, to desire, to pray, to, to, to ask God to bring to pass in our lives. And he's saying here that, you know, that we should know the love of Christ. And I encourage you, you know, if you're a person that, you know, that there are some of those people walking around the face of this earth that just seems to exude the love of God. The, the, the choices they make, the actions, the words they use, just who they are, they're just very developed in that. And thank God for folks like that, right? But then there's other folks that maybe they're still working on that. They're, 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 they're very much a work in process. And so if you're the type of person that just knows that you need to have more of the love of God, you know, walking through you, coming out of your mouth, through your actions, through your thought life, then this is a good prayer for all of us to pray. And he says here that, that, we, that, to, that we can know the love of Christ that passeth all natural wisdom or understanding, all knowledge. And I encourage you to be praying that. You say, well, how would I do that? Just, you just ask God for it. Heavenly Father, I want to know your love. I want to understand the depth of the love that you have for, well, for, you know, for us, but for those around me too. To understand and know that love and to be able to, to, to every decision I make, how I speak to others, the thoughts that I think, basically are steeped in that love, your love. That's a prayer you, that, that, that we can pray to ask God to, to bring that to the forefront in our lives. Because here's the thing. The love of God dwells inside of you. You know, if, if you and I, you know, nowadays, of course, if, you know, with all the things that are going on, maybe some of us are avoiding grocery stores. But back in the day when, you know, we used to go maybe more so than we do now to grocery stores and, and things like that. You ever notice if you go down the canned food aisle, like where the corn and the peas and the carrots and the green beans and all those things happen to be, you know, the thing about it is you have all different types of cans, but the only way you know what's inside those cans, generally speaking, is because there's a label on it. And so because of the label, you have an understanding that if I buy a, a can with a label of corn, then I know it's going to be corn in there. Well, the thing you need to realize is this. Sometimes you kind of forget the label you have on you. But you need to know you still have it in you. You have the love of God living inside of you because you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are born again. That means Jesus has come into your life. You've asked him to take up residence, to live within you. He has sent his Holy Spirit into your life to be a part of your life, to, to literally be the best part of your life. That's what's on the inside of your can. And so his love is there. But you need to understand that's what's on the, on the inside. You've got to understand that on the inside of me, no matter what it is the label might say, no matter what people are trying to say it's inside of me, I'm going to tell you what's on the inside. What's on the inside is what God put in there. God put on the inside of me his love, his peace, his long-suffering, his perseverance, his self-control. He put inside of me that joy. And so did he did you. That's what you have on the inside of you. That's what's in your can. So before you start letting someone else put a label on you, realize and don't forget what God put in your can. That's what's inside of you. That's who you are. That's the person you truly are. And so he tells us that we ought to be praying and believing God for that. And then he goes on to say in that second part of that verse, in verse 19, Ephesians 3, 19, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine being filled with the fullness of God? Every part of I mean, literally, who God is, what he's got, God would put it, just reveal it and, and fill you up with it. If you've got a car, you know you've got to put gas in that car. If you want it, well, some sort of, 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 of juice, whether it be a, a diesel fuel, I guess, or, or unleaded gasoline, or, or even electric. If you have an electric car, you, you know, obviously you've got to put fuel into that. But if you don't, it, it doesn't go anywhere. You and I need to realize that what we are believing for is, Father, I know what's in me. Now I want you to energize me with the knowledge and who you are that I will be filled with your fullness. Boy, I tell you, you get filled with the fullness of God, who he is, just, the, 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 just, just everything about him. 
Where you go, Jesus will. Jesus is walking through you. You'll speak as the oracles of God. You'll, you'll use the words of the Father. I mean, you and I, I'm sure you've prayed it. I mean, pretty much every day, don't we? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your paths. You're acknowledging him. Father, I'm, I mean, you're it. You're the most important influence in, in our lives. You're letting him know that. Now direct me, lead me, guide me. Praise God. But gee, if you want to have more of God, you've got to be then willing to give and let loose basically the parts of you that are standing in the way. You know, um, if, if you were to fill a glass with water, I know we don't see it, but it's, it's what, what, what we know is that if you take a glass that seems empty, it really isn't empty. The glass that appears empty actually has stuff in it. You just don't see it. You know, you know, has, you know, different type of molecules of air molecules and things that are in there. And, and so, you, you know, you, you know that now it, I guess it's some, it's transparent, but now when you put water in there, it displaces what was in there, the air. And then of course it displaces that. And now what you see is now is water. As you drink water, of course, the water goes inside of you. And then, you know, the air goes ahead and occupies that space that's now been left. It's kind of the same thing with us. You know, when you start studying and you, you pray and you believe God and you get the word in you, it, 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 it kind of has to make room. <laughs> and so things that just kind of get off of you. I know you've seen it. How many times have you just seen God just simply change you? Things that you used to do that you think, well, I don't do that anymore. I mean, stuff that wasn't that great. I know, uh, thinking of a gentleman right now, a dear friend of mine, and uh, many years ago, he just he just told me, you know, I mean, it was pretty obvious he had a problem with his mouth. Now, I don't say problem with his mouth. It, you know, I'm not talking about doesn't speak faith and all that. He just basically got in the habit of uh, down south we call it cussing. You know, use profanity a lot, and. You know, he just didn't realize he was doing it, but he was. It was just a part of his life. Well, he hung around the church and hung around the word, and all of a sudden, God just started changing him, and he didn't even recognize it. And one day, he, he got thinking, and he thought, man, I'm different. And somebody else walked up to him, someone he works with, and said, you know what, brother? I won't use his name. He said, you know, you have really changed. He said, what do you mean I've changed? Oh, you have. You used to cuss so bad, and you would just be critical, and you would yell. You just don't do that anymore. And he sat back and thought, you know what? I don't, do I? See, it's like displacing that glass. You had something in it, but then you displaced it with that, with that water. Well, you put the, the word in you. It displaces the other. And so we see change inside of us. Think about it is you've got to be willing to allow something to be poured in you. And that's why Jesus kept encouraging us to take heed how you hear, take heed what you hear. When you spend that time with him in your prayers, when you spend that time with him reading the word of God, the Bible, you, you're meditating it. You know, asking him to help you, how does this verse apply to me in my life? It becomes a part of you. And it just displaces other things. And you change. And thank God we do. And so we see this time and time again, that if we want to be filled with more of God, we've got to be emptied of ourselves. We've got to be willing to submit ourselves and say, Father, I want what you want for me. Not what I want, but what you want. That's the priority. And you, you know, and I, and you know, this is true. We have to reinforce this almost daily, you know, to make sure that nothing creeps in that isn't His will for our lives. And when we do that, well, then we see change. In Luke chapter nine, let me quickly give you this verse here. In Luke chapter nine, beginning at verse twenty-three through twenty-five. Luke chapter nine, beginning at the twenty-third verse, and it says here, and He said to them all, If any man will come after Me. Let him now first deny himself, take up his cross daily, and look at this last part, and then follow me. It's kind of a three-step process here. 
He says, let him first deny himself. That means basically let your flesh not run your life. Let your desire not be the thing that drives and motivates you. Be willing to accept God's will as being the best thing for you. Taking up his cross daily, every day. You know, um, I'm kind of, I'm a faith person. I believe in, obviously, you know, that what God says is true and he wants us to do it. And I love the fact that even we say we're, we're people of faith. God also knows sometimes that, you know, you just, you may miss it. That's another kind of colloquialism for sin. But it just sounds better when you say you missed it, doesn't it? Oh, I missed it. Anyway. And so, you know, he knows that you're going to miss it. And he provides a way for us to get forgiveness. Father, forgive me. And he does. First John 1, 9 is that verse. And the beautiful thing about that is that we can take up his cross daily. And even if you sometimes, sadly, put it down, you can pick it right back up again. Even if something gets in the way, your flesh rises up. Your mouth gets the best of you. You know, I've said for years, God wants our cup to run over, not our mouths, okay? But maybe your mouth runs over, you know. You can ask God to forgive you, and then you can pick up that cross again. Pick up the will and the word of God for your life again. Because it's still waiting for you. It's beautiful knowing God's always faithful to you, and he always will be. And then he goes, and then follow me. Then he says in verse 24 this of Luke chapter 9. For whosoever will save his life will lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, notice, the same shall save it. In other words, saying, if you really want fulfillment in your life, you've got to be willing to live for him, not live for you. Then verse 25. For what is a man advantaged if he were to gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? In other words, he was to, again reinforcing the idea that the only true way to live is to live for him. That's true life. I mean, John 10, 10 said it so wonderfully well, that the devil came but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and life more abundant. See, again, drawing that contrast between what God has for you and what anyone else or anything else has for you. God's always better. And we see this time and time again. And so... If you're in a situation where you're kind of like, well, I, I want to do it, but sometimes I'm, I'm weak. Well, guess what? The Bible said you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You're stronger than you think you are. Again, you've got to ask yourself, what's in my can? See, there's a lot of labels that maybe have been stuck to you. Others have put there, maybe you put there yourself. But you've got to ask yourself, really, what's in my can? What did the manufacturer put in there? You know, that's what God has done. He's put some things in you because he put somebody in you. He put the Holy Ghost in you. And so he reminds us of this. And so, you know, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Matthew 26, 41, puts it this way. Watch and pray. I love that. Watch and pray. Twofold. I mean, I know, you know... You know, to me, watch and pray means that two thing is that, you know, you, to, to me, you should have an expectancy, you know, watch and pray. I, I, I can look at a circumstance and acknowledge that, you know what, prayer is going to change that. Prayer is going to change what I see. And the nice thing about that is after I pray, I'm still watching because I'm expecting God to change that, that circumstance, that situation. I have an expectancy. I have faith. I believe that those things that I have that I desire when I pray, I'm expecting them to happen. That's faith. And he goes on to say, as I said in verse 41, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And here's the thing. Your flesh will it will be weak. Yes, of course. Your spirit, though, is willing and is powerful. And realize this your spirit is stronger than your flesh. And so be careful about saying things like, I just can't do that. Or I'm, a, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just tired. I'm just unable. No. If God says you're able, then you're able. You say, well, I just don't feel it. Okay, you don't. But the Bible says there's something else in your can. See, acknowledging that God has an ability to reach in your life and fill you up with whatever you have need of. 
And so tonight, if you need, you know, if you're in turmoil and conflict, if you're in some confusion or some doubt, understand who you are. You're a believer. You're precious. You are valuable to God and to others. I ask you just for a moment to examine what's really inside of your can. And remove those labels that maybe you put there, or maybe you've let the world put on you, or circumstances have tried to tell you and press in the type of person that you must be, because look what you've always done. I, I challenge you to look within yourself and find, well, that person that lives inside of you. You see, Jesus lives inside of you because you asked him in. And he is willing to continually fill your vessel, your can, with those things that you have need of. And never doubt and never fear that it will ever run out because it won't. So when we say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, you can rest assured God knows what he's talking about. Jesus is greater in you than whatever issues you might be facing right now. And it may seem hopeless to you, but it's not hopeless. So don't, don't allow the devil to lie to you. Jesus cares about you and has a plan for your life. And it's the best thing for you because he loves you and he knows you and still loves you. <laughs> Amen. Well, I hope this was a blessing to you. Just wanted to give a short little devotional and something to encourage you. You know, this Wednesday night, it's an opportunity for us. Half the week is kind of behind us. we got about half the week ahead of us. Let's finish this week strong for the Lord. Let's let him take great joy and pride with how we live, the things we do. And the rest of this week, let's make him proud. How about it? Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Amen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this evening and every single person who's watching now or will watch here in the future. I ask your blessings upon their life, your comfort, your peace. Father, bring into their lives those things that are needful, that are needed for them. I thank you for meeting their needs, meeting their natural needs, meeting their spiritual needs. Father, thank you for proving yourself once again that you're all that, that you are who you said you are. Father, thank you for once again proving that everything in the Bible is true and a promise that you made is a promise you will keep. We love you, Father. We honor you. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I will leave you with this. If there is uh, an opportunity that you'd like to seize upon and be a blessing to this church, then go ahead and do it. We're giving you one. On the screen, you'll see some information on how you can go ahead and financial be a blessing to this church, to this ministry. If you'd like to do that, I'd say thank you. Um, it's a joy to be a blessing. Thank you for your support. It's not taken for granted, and we appreciate it. Truly, we do. If there is something we can do for you, please reach out. Please reach out to us. The contact information is on the screen. Always forget that the devil, you know, has done things to you, I know. Forget those things. Always forget it. Just say, just let it roll off you. But never forget the things Jesus is doing for you and will always do for you. So if you've been hurt, let it go. And let Jesus go ahead and wrap his arms of love around you. And so in your giving, believe God. Thank him for it. Be a blessing to somebody this week. Look for an opportunity to, to bless somebody. You know, it's, it's a good thing to do. It's, it's a way to live. And so it's a great opportunity, as I said, to let others know about the true power, love, and joy that's in Jesus. Well, I hope to see you real soon. We'll be back here Sunday morning at 1030, and maybe you will as well here in the United States at that central time. 
I will also ask you that if you will, uh, if you want to check out our YouTube channel, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Germantown Christian Center. Uh, our My associate pastor, Pastor Michael, he has done a great job with that. And, and so he uploads those messages and they're on there so you can go back and listen to any of them. And uh, if that's a value to you, no joy to you, then take advantage of it. So until we see you again, God bless you. You be a blessing to somebody this week. And uh, look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless you. Bye-bye now.